Hi everybody and welcome to vodcast number eight. Uh, I'm Mr. Galladay and this is Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about some of the organs of the digestive system and this is a good point to uh, get your notebook organized, update your table of contents, and so forth. Uh, we are going to be making a diagram of some of the parts of the uh, digestive system. Uh, it's perfectly fine, perfectly good to put that on the left-hand side of your, uh, of your notes. Um, and you don't have to worry about having to draw all of these little parts because we're not going to be learning all of these. Uh, and I'm going to guide you through the process of uh, exactly what you need to put in your drawing. Okay, let's get started then. Uh, the first thing to, that we're going to be looking at is the... Uh, well, here is our overall diagram. And the first thing that we're going to be looking at is the upper digestive system. Uh, and the upper digestive system, the main functions that are in that are the... Uh, physically breaking apart the food, if you remember on our little earthworm that we looked at the other day um, on the last podcast, uh, we talked about mechanical digestion and that is uh, one of the main thing that happens in the upper digestive system. That of course begins with the mouth and the mouth is uh, where mecha much mechanical digestion takes place where the food is physically uh, take physically broken apart uh, and then we have an enzyme called amylase which begins to break starch down into monosaccharides. Now I'm going to be introducing some vocabulary that may be new to you uh, but we will be um, going into a lot more detail what exactly an enzyme is, what exactly monosaccharides are. Uh, don't worry, uh, we will be covering that in some future uh, well, future materials, okay? Um, after the mouth, <clears throat> the food, of course, passes through something called the esophagus. Um, the esophagus is a tube, which when you swallow, that is where the food goes down. It does not go down your windpipe, uh, hopefully. Um, it travels down through the esophagus uh, and carries food into the stomach by some muscle contractions called peristalsis. Uh, we'll be hearing more about peristalsis as we move down through the digestive tract. Uh, the next stop is, of course, the stomach, uh, and the stomach is uh, where uh, we don't think of the stomach as being a place where this physical uh, digestion takes place, but in fact that is its main function. Uh, your stomach is a very muscular bag. It is surrounded by muscles that are kind of like a washing machine that uh, churns the food, uh, mixes it with a variety of different enzymes, your stomach also contains a great deal of acids, uh, notably hydrochloric acid and another enzyme called pepsin. Pepsin is an enzyme that breaks apart proteins uh, into amino acids. Again, uh, we will be talking about what these things are in detail in the coming days. Okay, so you might be wondering, what of this do I have to draw? Well, let me kind of see if I can show you here. Um, First of all, uh, you can draw a mouth, and your mouth, uh, if your mouth looks like this, that's perfectly fine. Well, I guess to clarify, I should say if the drawing, if your mouth drawing uh, looks like this, that's perfectly okay. If your actual mouth looks like this, I would suggest seeking medical attention right away. Uh, but um, I'm not, again, I'm not so much interested in anybody being a uh, perfect artist, so you can draw a mouth with some teeth that looks like that. The esophagus, of course, is the tube that leads out of the mouth, uh, and it's the thing that carries the food into the stomach. The stomach is basically just kind of a, uh, a wide place in our continuing tube that leads from the mouth to the anus. Uh, the stomach, uh, its functions are listed there. Okay, on to the next thing that we're going to talk about, uh, and the next uh, organs that we're going to talk about are these accessory organs, and we mentioned those in the previous vodcast. Um, they are organs that the food does not pass through, but they produce lots of other chemicals, most importantly enzymes, um, that are used to break apart those food chemically, break apart food, to chemically break apart food. There we go. Uh, one very large organ in your body, it's one of the largest internal organs, is the liver. 
and the liver does a great many uh, functions. Uh, one of the things that it does is it produces something called bile. Now bile is a digestive enzyme that breaks apart fats uh, and that bile uh, is basically just dribbled out very slowly from the liver in, in just kind of a drop at a time uh, and it's stored in the gallbladder. Now the gallbladder, um, many of you may have parents or maybe yourself or someone that you know has had their gallbladder removed. Uh, it is possible to get by just fine without it. Um, what it normally does in a healthy person is it stores that bile uh, until you eat a big greasy meal and then uh, then that bile is released all at once into the lower part of the stomach <clears throat> where the stomach joins the small intestine. Okay. Another very important uh, accessory organ is the pancreas. Uh, the pancreas does again uh, many things. One of the most important things it does is it produces a hormone called insulin. Um, those of you who uh, either have diabetes or know someone or have a relative uh, that uh, has diabetes and you may know that um, one of the ways that we treat that is they may, uh, that person uh, may have to take uh, shots of insulin in order to regulate their blood sugar. We will be going into some detail into how this works and uh, exactly what goes on here uh, because unfortunately uh, just about everybody, uh, most of us either know someone or are related to someone or possibly ourselves uh, uh, have this, uh, this disease and uh, so I think it's important that we know a little bit about it. Okay, the other thing that the pancreas does is it produces also some digestive enzymes which are released into the stomach. Okay, so these accessory organs. So there's the drawing that we have from before, which includes the mouth, esophagus, and stomach. Uh, the other thing that you'll need to have on there is the liver. Uh, the liver is this big, uh, fairly large organ, and near the liver is the gallbladder, and the gallbladder, as we said, is basically just a little sac that has a tube running into the lower part of the stomach. Okay, and then the other thing that is there is the pancreas. Uh, I've drawn it here with a dashed line to show that uh, it's sort of behind these other organs. Um, so the pancreas sits uh, kind of behind the stomach. Okay, uh, as we move on then, uh, the next set of organs that we're going to be talking about is the ones that are grouped into the lower digestive system. <clears throat> the lower digestive system is where most of our digestion actually takes place. That's where much of the chemical digestion takes place. In the lower digestion uh, system, in the small intestine primarily, we're breaking large molecules down into smaller molecules. Okay, That's what we call chemical digestion. And then there's also this function of absorption that's also going on. Okay, So those smaller molecules are being absorbed into the blood and carried around. Okay, um, again, macromolecules, monomers, those are all terms that we will define uh, within the next few days. One of the most important uh, organs in the lower digestive system is the so-called small intestine. The small intestine is where most of uh, digestion takes place. Uh, chemically, uh, this is where most of the food is broken down. Uh, most of the enzymes that are going to do this got added earlier either in the mouth or in the stomach uh, but at that time they got mixed with the food and so now is when those enzymes actually take quite a long time uh, to take effect and so that time is uh, available to them as they slowly pass through the small, small intestine. Uh, this is where macromolecules or large molecules are broken down into smaller molecules so this is where the enzymes actually take and uh, uh, do their jobs and those small molecules are then absorbed into the blood. Okay so in the intestine uh, in the small intestine we have chemical digestion taking place and we also have that process of absorption taking place. Uh, the next um, organ that the food will pass through, well at this point it is really no longer food, um, it's going to pass from the small intestine into the large intestine. Uh, the small intestine is this sort of uh, folded up network of, uh, well it's not really a network, but it's a long, 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 long tube 
um, that is sort of folded up and uh, the food passes through here into the large intestine, which is this large green thing. Um, as you uh, learned in class the other day, another term for the large intestine is also the colon. And one of the main functions of the colon is to reabsorb water, which is used in the digestive process. Um, a lot of water uh, comes into the small intestine and the stomach, uh, both by our drinking and then also by other processes. Um, and our bodies uh, really try to conserve that water. And so all that water is removed uh, in the large intestine. Okay. Uh, the large intestine is also a home for a great, great, great many bacteria. Um, these are actually helpful bacteria. Uh, many people are sometimes troubled to learn about the uh, billions and billions of bacteria that they have living in their body, but they are actually uh, quite helpful. Um, they utilize these unabsorbed nutrients and they, uh, as a waste product, produce vitamins that are useful to us. Uh, and so that also takes place in the large intestine. Okay, so to return to our drawing, we have uh, the upper digestive system as well as some accessory organs currently drawn in there. Uh, the next thing to draw then is the small intestine. And the small intestine, as I said, an easy way to think of that is just sort of this long, long, long curvy tube uh, that goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, I drew a section of dashed line there to show that that part is going to actually pass behind uh, the next part, which is of course the large intestine. Uh, the large intestine, the food uh, enters, so we, we leave the stomach, pass through the small intestine, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, through the small intestine, uh, and then at this point it's going to enter the large intestine. So the small intestine uh, is this particular shape and has a particular lining which is there to increase surface area. Large intestine has a very different type of lining which has a very different function. So this is where the water is reabsorbed uh, and then this is uh, of course where the uh, what's left of whatever we ate um, passes out through the rectum and the anus. Okay so at this point you should have a drawing that looks well, at least this good. Um, I don't think this is beyond anybody's artistic ability, and I'm sure some of you will have drawings that look much better than this. Um, as a kind of a review, uh, you should now be able to use your drawing and your notes uh, and be able to tell what are these various organs, okay? Uh, so go back and forth between, if you don't have sufficient notes, then you need to go back and uh, look at some of these things, okay? If you're drawing, uh, if you can't tell from your drawing what these things are, then maybe you need to redo it or add a little more detail, okay? Uh, but all of these are uh, organs that I believe you should know the names of and you should know the functions of, and you should be able to tell all of these uh, with the notes that you have just finished taking. So again, feel free to replay this as many times as you need so that you can get that information. Okay, so at this point we started off this discussion of the digestive system with this picture and uh, and we said that one of the reasons this was kind of a, uh, a good thing to think about is it's made of a much, is, uh, cheeseburgers are made of a bunch of different types of foods. Um, and so what we're going to be doing in the uh, coming lectures, coming notes, is we're going to be learning a little bit about, first of all, well, what the heck is a cheeseburger made of? Uh, and then what happens to all of those individual parts? What, How do they get broken down individually? Okay, this has been Vodcast 8. I'm Mr. Galladay for Honors Biology, and I hope you have a great day.